All right, welcome to Practicing Designer. I want to give you a quick spin on how to use this software. So as you can see, the menu up top uh, basically corresponds to the number keys. So if you want to drop USB SA targets, just press one. And then you have a different nine selections that you can quickly press with your number key. So for instance, if you want USB SA full target, you just hit one and you can place it wherever you want. You can also rotate it. So if, for instance, you press E or Q to rotate. Uh, you can also tilt it. You can also Z and C, you can tilt it. You can also raise lower with T and G or even use R and F to pitch it backwards and forward. And then wherever you want to put it, you can just click on the mouse button again and you place it on the ground. If you want to move it, you can just select it and then move it somewhere else, rotate it maybe, and then drop it in the ground. Um, so you have that functionality. We have uh, IPSC targets. You have vision barriers like walls. So for instance, if you want a, a wall medium white, you just press six and you can drop the wall. You can still do the same thing, rotate whatever you want. Uh, uh, menu item 4 is stage markers, so this is where you find your fault lines, your stomp pad, your shooting boxes, uh, your axes. And if you want to go, as you can see, 1 out of 2, that's basically page 1 out of 2 pages, you can go using Q or E. So if you press E to go to the next page, you see fault lines in 2 feet increments for those of you who want proper placement, proper accurate uh, measurements. Uh, 5 is basically steel. Uh, so you can press 1 for USPSA proper, uh, 5, uh, 3 for plate rack, uh, 5, 4 for Texas Star, for instance. And if you want to meet, if you want it to move faster instead of pressing Q and E every time to, to move in small increments, you can hold on Shift and press E or Q in order to rotate much quicker. Place them down like that. And then you have uh, supports, uh, for instance, target stands. Very few right now. I'm, I'm building more uh, props. And then you can go to 8 as well for doors, tables, chairs, gun props, and stuff like that. And then, uh, let me just quit here. If you want to, for instance, if you drop something and you really don't want it, you can just right-click and it will go away. <clears throat> you can also place no-shoot targets or hardcover targets by going to 1. And let's say I want a tuxedo, so 8. I can bring it up to my target here, uh, rotate it accordingly, and then just place it wherever I want, and then drop it. So now you have a tuxedo target, right? Same thing with no shoots. And what's really cool is right now you're in the editing mode. If you look at the bottom left, you see mode editing. If you hit tab, it switches to activation mode. So activation mode allows you to select activators. Uh, so for instance, a popper can be activated, so that's why it's lit up. Uh, if you select plate rack, plate racks are usually not activated, so you, they don't light up. And also, if you hit tab again, you can go to simulation mode where you can actually shoot stuff, which is pretty cool. I'll talk about it in a bit. But uh, in order to do activate, so let's say, let's pick a uh, swinger. So let's go to USPSA swinger. And let's put a swinger over here. Uh, let's drop another uh, USPSA popper over here. And I want that to activate a bobber, for instance, a USPSA bobber. Okay. So let's put that over here. Now, if you want to make it make this activate the swinger and make this activate the bobber, all you do is you tap and go to activation mode. And you select your activator. So right now there are two activators here. I can select this. And you see there'll be a line that will come up from it. And all you have to do is just select what you want to activate. Like for instance, you won't activate the wall, so that's why it's not highlighted. But stuff that can be activated will be highlighted. So let's click on that and now you see this line, activation line, to tell the system that you this bobber, this popper activates this swinger. So if I want this to activate this bobber, I'll just click on that and then do this. If you want to remove the activation lines, you can just click on that and then hit delete. And then that will basically remove the activation lines. And what's really cool is you can have one activator activating many things. And also there are some props that are both activators and can be activated. So for instance, if I go to prop here, um, or let me go back to editing mode and hit eight and bring the door. Okay, a door is both and you can Activate the door to activate the target and you can also activate and open the door using a popper So let's try that. So let's go to activation mode I want this door to activate this bobber and I want this popper to activate the door All right, so now if you go to simulation mode, I can open the door oh, Sorry go to simulation mode, right? I open the door and now you see that op the, the act of opening the door activates the bobber right and to reset uh, the system you can just hit tab again and go back to simulation mode you will automatically reset everything so now if i shoot the popper that will act open the door and the act of opening the door will um 
activate the bobber. Look at that, right? And so what's really cool too, I've built uh, physical uh, things like bobber, uh, like poppers, uh, even Rex in the shot. Even Texas Star would, uh, would react physically using actual uh, physics. Um, so we have a lot more steel targets, like for instance, an Irish plate rack if you want. Uh, maybe a, a Polish plate rack, for instance. I will have more of this stuff. I'm still building out more uh, interesting targets for you to shoot at. So let's go over the simulation mode. Now you can actually shoot this. Ah. Oh. Let's do that. And then it starts swinging just as uh, a normal Polish. Yeah, so that's a quick guide. And then what else can you do? Well, if you hit escape to go to the menu, you can save and load the stages if you want. You can also take a photo. So there are three different camera angles, a front half auto view where it actually shows you all of the props. You can do a full stage if you have a very big one, or you can even do a perspective view, which is pretty cool, I think. And you can also save it as a, a JPEG image. Uh, what else can you do here? You can also change the bay. So I have a few selections of bay, like if you want it orange maybe, or if you prefer something more realistic like grass, right? Like this. And you can also change the sky. So right now, it's it, I think it's this sky. You can change it to a night sky. It looks like that. You want to shoot in the dark. You can also change the sky uh, maybe like this, a nice better view. And you can also rotate the sky. So for instance, if you don't want the sun coming from this angle, you can go over to settings. And can change the sky rotation. So as you can see, as, as I move the slider, you see the rotation has changed and the lighting has changed as well. To exit, just press X on top here. So now the sun is coming from here and it's shining light onto the props and that's why you see it so shine, so bright. Uh, you can also change your mouse settings. If it's too sensitive, you drop. I think my preference is about 0.5. Uh, that's, so it, it doesn't really move that fast and doesn't actually make you sick, right? And so once you're done, you can just quick using the exit design. So that's it. That's a quick tour of practicing designer for the piece.